Gravensteiner Dunkels Bockbeer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. Today, one from Northwest Germany, and it's from the CNA Feltins Brewery, who are based in the North Rhine Westphalia region. And this is their Gravensteiner, or I should I pronounce it, Gravensteiner Dunkels Bock beer. Now, this Gravensteiner range, I've tried a couple of the beers that they do, and this is a new one, that I think this is new for 2023. Or is it 20? No, new for 2022. And uh, I've tried a few beers from this range. It's their, basically their unfiltered, unpasteurized beer range. And I have to say, everything I've had so far has been excellent. I didn't know they did a Dunkels until my mate Norby brought this over from me from Germany. And I'm really looking forward to it because if it's anything like the other two, then this is going to be fantastic. Now, Feltins, you may or may not know, very big brewery in Germany. Uh, they, at one point, were the fourth largest selling brewery in Germany, and that's no mean feat. I think the others were Kronbacher, Bex, uh, possibly Paulana, and uh, Felsins were number four. I think if you talk about Felsins, you are talking about their Pilsner. That's the one that everybody's tried, and I have to say, it is a fantastic Pilsner. I've had it both in a can, and on keg as well and it's been absolutely gorgeous there's uh in york there's a place called the shambles which is basically a, a small area of the old of the old part of york and there's a pub there i think it, it's world beers or something like world pub or something like that but they do loads of craft beer but they also do quite a few german beers and they did have feltings on tap and i remember stopping off there was shopping with the missus and I had a pint of feltings and to be honest I didn't really want to leave, but you know what you've got to do when you're out shopping with a missus. But yeah, the, the, the stuff in this range is good and Feltins are a great brewer. You don't become fourth best in Germany for being a shit brewer, put it that way. And yeah, really looking forward to this. Little tidbit of information about Feltins. If you're a football fan and you've heard of um, Schalke 04, they actually sponsored the team and the place where they play is called the Felton's Arena. Not been there, but apparently it's a fantastic stadium. And of course, they sell their beer in the ground. Not like the shit that they serve up in the London Stadium, which is nearly £7 a pint. Yeah, you're, you're paying nearly £7 a pint for a, a pint of Amstel or a pint of Carlsberg. And nah, that's not happening. That is no way on this earth. I would rather not drink. And there's Percy. What are you doing, Percy? Come on. Percy. And here's Captain Twat. What have you done today? Not a lot. I took him for a walk and he walked in a load of mud because that's what he does. And he's a twat, but he's my twat. So there you go. Uh, yeah, if you're, a, as I say, if you're a, a fan of um, a fan of football, you've heard of 04 Schalke. Well, yeah, that's the difference between Schalke and West Ham. The beer, <laughs> nothing to do with the success that Schalke have had and the tragedy that is undergoing West Ham at the moment. We are playing absolute shit. I see one of our directors died the other day, David Gold. I'm not a fan of what he did at the club, to be honest. But if someone dies, you don't um, you don't stick the knife in after they've died. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my comments there because yeah i have to say i was not a fan of him or the other twat sullivan either what are you doing percy you have no idea what the hell is going on do you look this is normal for him he's such a dick come on get down get down under the desk mate go on he sits there all day when i'm working under the desk farting and snoring 
I'm, I don't know, I'm sure they think on the meetings that I have that it's me that's doing that. But it ain't, it's that tubby little terror down there. Let's get this open. Right, before we get it open, I'll just give you a quick rundown on what it is. This in a little stubby bowl, 330ml stubby bowl. Uh, it's 6.8%, which is in keeping with a Bock beer. Um, Bock beers, this is this is called a, a Dunkel's Bock beer. Bocks are normally sort of a, an amber colour. They're not really a, a dark colour. I'm not, I don't know what colour this is. I'm assuming this is dark because it's got the uh, the Dunkel's prefix on there. But normally they're they're slightly darker than Hellas's. Um, better in keeping with like a, a Czech Hills and Lager, it's got that amber, amber malt colour, if you know what I mean. But there's no brew sheet on the website, unfortunately. Um, it just says it contains um, malted barley, water, hop, hopfen, which is hops, and hefe, which is yeast. Now, if you've not heard of this range of beers before, this is, I, I think, this is their attempt at like a, a craft beer range. And I have to say, what I've had so far has been absolutely brilliant. So let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right, I'm using, using the, the famous cap lifter. I really do like this. This is a, a really good invention. I'm impressed with that. Minimal effort, takes the cap off, doesn't damage it. There's the cap. Let me get the auto focus doing what he's supposed to do. There you go. Gravensteiner. Right, what glass shall we get it into? Um, mm, 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 mm. What have we got? We've got a Vine Stefano glass. Let's try that. It doesn't look too clean, but oh well. Needs must. Oh yeah, that is quite dark. And that glass is quite dirty. Can you see that in the glass? That's Pretty similar to a colour of a dunkel on the nose. Oh, it smells lovely. There's a ton of caramel malt, some roasted malt on there as well. Yeah, really good. I'm liking this. There's a little bit of fruit on the aroma too. Some dark fruit. But it smells, it smells like a dunkel, I have to say. There's, I'm loving that malt. That's really, really bready, grainy, good quality malt that's got into that. But there's a roasted element to it as well, which is giving it a little, little touch of spice. Very interesting indeed. Let's get it down the hatch. Some wall, as they say in Germany. Oh wow, oh, that is fucking excellent. Oh, I'm loving this. Oh, I don't know what the Feltwings have done, but in this range, this Gravensteiner range, that really is the best that they do. Here's a better look at it now. <clears throat> it's uh, Natur Trube, which means it's unfiltered. And there is a ton of flavor in it. It looks like a good pint as well. Look at the, the tightly packed, let me get the, let me get all that focus going on. Yeah, look at the tightly packed bubbles in there. That looks amazing and it tastes fantastic. Really good. It's not as sweet as a lot of dunkles out there. There is a little, little element of ethanol on there. It's not big, but I can I can get it, and it's 6.8%. You'd more or less expect that. But this is all about the malt, as a good Bock beer should be. You're getting a big caramel malt on that. That's the that's the main thing. But there's elements of I'm, what I'm perceiving to be roasted malt. It could potentially be hot bitterness, but it's, it's more like roasted malt. Let me have another go. Oh, actually, saying it now, there is a bitterness on the end that 
is coming across as noble hop spiciness but christ almighty that does taste good i have to say that is a fantastic effort from feltins i'm really impressed Mm. Oh, that's so good. That is really, really good. Um, what more is there to say? Well, um, as Bock beers go, I'd go as far as to say that's the best I've ever tasted. That really is good. I did try the um, the Iron Becker stuff, the originators of the Bock beer style, and their beer will will never get up there as long as they're putting it in green bottles. I had a a bottle yesterday it was the um the Weinacht beer which is basically their their christmas beer and it just didn't taste nice at all it had that green bottle skunkiness to it wasn't good feltins have no such inhibitions about putting their beer in brown bottles and it it shows it really does make this beer a fantastic beer not that it wasn't but if it was put into a green bottle i imagine it would be to the detriment of the beer. That is lovely. That is really nice. <clears throat> and if they're going to cast it as a Bock beer, which obviously they can, um, that's, as I say, that's probably one of the best Bock beers I've ever tasted. Uh, just a quick note, you probably know this anyway, I've said it on the numerous videos, but there is a picture of a billy goat on there that is synonymous with any kind of bock beer um, box like this and doppel box etc ice box they all have um they all have that billy goat on there which is um a corruption of the pronunciation by the bavarians and that's basically where where the the symbol has come from all right so good and I'm raging because it's only in a 330ml bottle. They do it in cans as well. I'm not sure what the cans are. I think the cans may be 500. But this is so good. And the only downside of this is I've only got one bottle when it's in a 330ml bottle and I've drank quite a bit of it already. So I want to savour it. And I want to I want to savour these flavours. because I don't know how easy this is going to be to get over here in the UK. But it's a great beer, I have to say. So, what is the verdict on Gravensteiner by CNA Feltins? Well, in my opinion, uh, this is the, the well, it's their Dunkel's Bock beer, and in my opinion, this is the best Bock I have tasted so far. Now, it may be because it's a dark Bock and it's got a hell of a lot of malt character on there, but that is the characteristic of a Bock beer. It should have more malt than hops. There's a little hop spiciness on that on that finish, but. As I say, it's all about the malt. It's all about the big caramel malt. There's a slight bready malt note to it, but it's mainly about the caramel malt, and it tastes great, I have to say. And for me, that is a 10 out of 10 all day long, because if you're going to be one of the best of the style, which I do believe, in my opinion, that this is, um, you're going to get a 10 out of 10, and that is fantastic, and that has not let that range of beers go down. Now, this goes to show you that you can brew decent beer with good ingredients and have a care about what you're doing and produce it on a big scale. This is what Feltins do. They're the fourth, or were the fourth, I'm not sure where they are now, but they were the fourth largest brewer in Germany uh, in terms of sales. And I've tasted their beer and it's fantastic. So if you can brew on that kind of scale, then Molson Coors and all the other shit houses that are producing just nondescript lager in this country, then pff, well, yeah, it, it says it all, really, doesn't it? But there you go. Um, yeah, for me, that's a 10 out of 10. That is fantastic. That's the best Bock beer, in my opinion, that I've tried. None of the others really spring to mind. I mean, there, are, there have been some good ones, but this, for me, is the standout. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a 10 out of 10. I'm definitely going to recommend it. I'm not sure how easy this is going to be for you to get hold of in the UK. There's some available on or there was some available 
on their website but if you're going to get it over to the UK it's going to cost you a pretty penny but keep an eye out for it uh, House of Trembling Madness um, they do the Felton's Pilsner I recommend that if you can get that anywhere in the UK it's a lot easier to get hold of over here in the UK then get some of that because that is fantastic but this stuff if you can I urge you any anything from the Gravensteiner range is fantastic you will not go wrong with it and especially with this one this is a great one so yeah that's 10 out of 10 and that is highly recommended and remember just like this stuff beer is working class champagne <laughs>